thing is until you can erase three february's shut up Bang! quality over quantity lebron has beaten some of the best competition in nba history he's the goat emoji i will not cuss i will not cuss i will not swear i will not swear where sports is the base life and fun are the results this is the brian snow show Well, good day, everybody, and welcome to this edition of the Brian Snow Show, and a hearty welcome to those of you listening on WQEE 99.1 FM in Noonan, Georgia. And today, I have a good buddy of mine. Long time no see. Yes, sir. Sharif Ahmed Sports Talk has joined the fray. My favorite cigar smoking sports talk buddy. What's going on with you, man? How are you? I'm doing well, sir. I just want to congratulate you on your remission, buddy. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. A year and a half long fight, but we got it done. We got yes, it done, sir. man. All right. Speaking of getting done, get uh speaking of getting it done, and I'm gonna, you know, people accuse me of reaching for the low-hanging fruit, which involves the truth, but the hell with it. Why do people praise LeBron when he doesn't get it done when it counts? Why? I, I'm just. <laughs> it, uh, it was sad to see the record being broken. Um, yes. It was difficult. I, I I couldn't watch the game. I I try to ignore all the hoopla and everything, and it was just so mm -hmm. much of it. And. Uh, this we're on, we're on we're on radio. I can't really say, but I know, I know. Trust I, me. I'm, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna speak from the fans' perspective. It's it's a it's a milestone that someone can actually say that they've been a part of. Like we've been a part of yep. Kareem passing, you know, passing the milestone. We all thought that record was gonna be unbroken. We all, you know, and the accolades are individual accolades mostly. And I like to talk mm -hmm. about the team accolades Same. and. And the thing is, is that a lot of people, you know, on other on other sports talk things are all praising LeBron for what he has done and the teams that he had and, you yep. know, all this other stuff and comparing him to the one era to the next. Well, you and I have been blessed that we have seen, I can honestly say we've seen, what, the 80s, the 90s, the yes. 2000s. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, is that, you know, if the, if the rules have not changed so much for the offensive part of the game man i don't on i wouldn't that bre that record would still be standing right now um yes, it would. and i tried to tell people that and and you know everybody like screams and hollers at me and tells me this is a different era it's like i understand that 
Mm-hmm. That's the reason why. That's the reason why Kareem's thirty six thousand points are so much more. I don't know. Val- I don't know. Validated, but more so yes. that the physicality was there. The three point shot was not really existent, and when it was, and in, in, in it came into its inception, it was like taboo. Guys yeah. were afraid to shoot the three because of the contract, mm-hmm. you know, field goal percentages and all that other stuff. Yep. And I sit there and I just say to myself, like, damn. Could we go back? We can even go back in the late eighties into the nineties, where the physicality was king, and yes. that's the thing. That's, yes. and that's the thing. And that that's the thing is like you know they, they you know uh, Gilbert Arenas, who I follow, who's oh, an Arizona geez. Wildcat, who's an Arizona Wildcat, um, yeah, ha- had said that there's there no, you can't compare the eras, and that is true. We can all agree that the athletes coming into the league are much more athletic. Right. They are, are their game is their game is a lot more, you know, if you have a three, a three can play the one, two, three or four to whereas mm-hmm. before back in the back in the day, you had a designated five, a designated four, a designated three. Yes. And the thing is, is that he was like saying that, well, Bill Lane Beer couldn't play in this game. And you know what? He's absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. But there are stories that have been that have been documented when Joe Dumars would be covering somebody back in the bad boy days, he mm-hmm. would whisper to the guys like, don't, don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't right. do it. You got 44, you got 44 and 40 behind me. They're going to put you on your back. Now the mm-hmm. league has eliminated that. So the thing is, is that if, 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 the, if even if half of the rules were, were still in play from the, from that time and LeBron beat the record, I would, I would tip my hat to him. Like, mm, okay. The physicality is there. He still produced over 37, 36, 37, 38,000 points. Okay, right. I can see that. Mm-hmm. But there has also been players too, like G- the European players like Luca, Giannis. All those guys have been documented in saying that the, that the yep. NBA is a lot more easier to score. Even the late, great Kobe Bryant said it was hard to yeah, score Kobe in international said. basketball. Yeah, it yeah, was. Because, it was. Yeah. And a lot of the things is that the defenses have completely changed. You can't mm-hmm. put the hands on the hip. You can't you can't check them when they go up for a layup. You can't you can there's you, you can't really give them that much body contact when they're going up for a dunk you or sure for a can. layup. You sure can. And it's just like that's that's LeBron's game. LeBron's game. I call it bully ball. He just barrels himself in there and scores every now and then. He'll hit a three pointer here and there, and everyone says, "Okay, he's God's greatest gift." But there's it's hard he's for me not. to to accept that. But he's, I, it's it's I, hard I for it's hard for me to accept. I I I grew up in Chicago. All right, mm-hmm. I saw the entire Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls era from 1984 to 1998. You can't tell me that era right there, which still featured Magic Johnson, which still featured Larry Bird, which still featured Julius Irving, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Clyde Drexler, and those Hall of Famers can be can be radically erratic can be blown to bits by all these brawn huggers you can't tell me that mm-hmm. you can't tell me that this brawn era quote unquote is better than what we saw growing up i'm not buying it i won't buy it you can't <laughs> make me no, and here's the irony of of the team that he has or uh, has surrounded himself today. Mm-hmm. Another thing that I try to tell all my friends here, and of course they don't want to hear it. Of course, LeBron does. LeBron doesn't like playing with young talent. No, he doesn't like look, playing with young talent. And let's just call it real. 2014 proved this. He doesn't like playing against young talent. And look what he has around him surrounded himself. Mm-hmm. Now I'm 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 going to speak I'm speaking as a fan of basketball. I'm not going to be speaking in the hatred, right? And the dislike I have for LeBron, right? When you look at that that Laker team that they've constructed, mm-hmm. can make a run. Only problem is I I think that that team got put together a little too late in the season. Yes, and here's why: LeBron now it gets to have an opportunity to rest. AD has an opportunity to rest. Mm-hmm. So when te- when so when the Lakers are when they have a really good lead or if they're behind by maybe 
two or three possessions where they can rest those guys and right. the other guys come in there. Either they can retake the lead or they can keep that leap, that, that two possession deficit afloat. Then you got fresher legs in LeBron. You have fresher legs in AD. And mm-hmm. then that's when they come around and turn around and they do well. But yes. here's the problem, though. A lot of those young players that he surrounded himself with really don't have that playoff stretch mentality, like the last 15 to 20 games where you have to really play good basketball Bang. to position yourself, position yourself not, not not for a buy-in game, for a spot in the buy-in game, or try to make mm-hmm. an eight or nine seed. Those are like playoff games. This is the best time of the year to watch NBA basketball. It is. Because you have a lot more teams on both conferences now where you don't know, okay, we know the top 10 teams in the West are going to be eight, all these guys, these teams in the East. There's a lot of teams in there that are like one, two, even teams that are three games behind the 10 spot. They have a legitimate shot of making it, which right. makes it now much more exciting. Right. So now when you have teams in from 11, 12, and 13 that are two, three games behind the spot and the Lakers are a game ahead of them, mm-hmm. now they say to themselves, well, shoot, we got a chance. Yeah. And now these teams are coming out of nowhere, balling out of their mind. Mm-hmm. getting the results that they need to position themselves to knock off a Laker team. Because if the Laker team gets knocked off, if the Lakers don't make the play-in game this year, yeah, everybody's going to say the playoff, the playoffs is not, how do you say, it's not the same, but it's different. Yeah. We have yeah. the Sacramento Kings balling. The yes. Cleveland Cavaliers balling. balling. The Boston Celtics look like they're – the Boston, when when that uh, I can't I cannot pronounce the new coach's name, the young guy. Everyone thought that the guy was going to just fall off the map. This guy mm-hmm. now has this this guy is leading the team with the best record in the league. Yep. And we have a lot of teams that we have not seen that are in the thick of the playoff. To me, that is amazing. I would love to see the Indiana. I think the Indiana Pacers are are, are in it too. It yep. would be so great to see teams that we have not seen in the last five to ten years. To mm-hmm. have an opportunity to play in this playoff, and I am so pumped. And I don't know what it is if it's the media, social media that's trying to say the Lakers are the greatest team. This that you see it all over social media, Brian. Oh, yes. the Lakers just beat the Warriors by twenty five points. Well, Steph Curry wasn't playing. Then right. you know the Lakers and, and the are Warriors make the are not, and the Warriors haven't been whole all season long, and they don't want to yeah. talk about that. No, they haven't been whole. And then once that team is healthy, do you want do you want to play? Do them? you want to see them in the playoffs? No, no, sir, I do not. No, sir. Do you no, when sir. Steph Curry when Steph Curry gets back, and he will get back, ladies and gentlemen. When Steph Curry gets back and that team is a full unit, listen to me carefully. When that team is a full unit, once again, do you want to see them in April or May no, sir. or June? And it's something I've said so many times over, and I will continue to say it, and people don't believe me. People actually have laughed at me when I say this. To be the champs, you must beat the champs. And I'm not talking about a regular season series either. No. Only thing is, though, if the Warriors get in and they're healthy, it doesn't matter where you put them in the playoffs. They're still going to be dangerous. They're going to be absolute. They're going to be an absolute nightmare. And if last night's game against the Minnesota Timberwolves doesn't say it mm-hmm. and doesn't show it, because remember they were down double digits four separate times, four times. Yes, they were. And they were down by nine at the end of the first quarter, and by nine at the end of the third quarter. And in the second and fourth period, which are the payoff periods to me, they came all the way back. And they came back and won the game. And people don't sure want did. to see that. No, they don't. And it's going to be – I think this year's playoffs is going to be fun to watch. I mean, I even watch games at my friend's house. Games like the, like out here, we watch the Pacific time games, like the Utahs and the, the Laker Clipper games. And those games are just as exciting, high scoring, yes. entertaining. Yep. And these guys are out there putting it all to try to get into this playoff. There they are. That they are. Let's pause for a break. Yeah. And when y'all get back, there's a certain quarterback in a certain situation that, you know, people don't want to talk about. 
You're listening to The Brian Snow Show on WQEE 99.1 FM, noon in Georgia and outside of Atlanta. And you're listening to The Brian Snow Show on Snowman Multimedia. Hey, Braves fans. I'm Mac McGee with Braves Country. We'll be right here on the key all year long, giving you Braves Country baseball, pitch by pitch, inning by inning of your Atlanta Braves. Make sure to catch Braves Country right here on the key. We go live three to five. We'll keep you up to date on the upcoming schedule for Braves Country. That's Braves Country HD and Braves Country Baseball right here on the key. Sports fans, it's Rod Peterson here, host of the Rod Peterson Show, inviting you to join us daily for two hours of Atlanta's funnest sports talk right here on WQEE. I say fun because it is. You've never heard a show like it because we make the listeners a part of the show. Every day between noon and 2 p.m. Eastern, you'll hear plenty of the best sports talk, including the latest on the Falcons, the Braves, and more. And who knows, you might even hear you. That's the Rod Peterson Show, daily at noon, right here on WQEE 99.1 FM. Moving is a big decision. Selling or buying a home in any market, but especially today's, can raise a lot of questions. Hi, I'm Amy with Killingsworth Realty. My husband Todd and I serve the Coweta and local area. Our purpose at our first meeting is to learn your goals, answer questions, and provide resources so that you can make the best decision for you and your family. Find us online at killingsworthrealty.com or call 678-525-0047 to schedule a free consultation today to discuss your real estate needs. You don't have to do this alone. WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key, home of Southern Sports and Talk, Noonan, Sharpsburg, Franklin. Where sports is the base, life and fun are the results. This is The Brian Snow Show. It is the Brian Snow Show on WQEE 99.1 FM, Atlanta, and parts of Georgia. Thank you all for picking us up. And thank you to the folks uh, in Baltimore, WLEO, 26.7 online radio. I'm with Sharif Ahmed. We're talking sports into your Monday afternoon and your Monday evening. And what is going on with the Ravens and Lamar Jackson? Why can't they come to a deal? Why can't they come? And I've wanted to talk to you about this for a while. We just never got a chance to hook up. Why can't they come to an agreement? What is wrong with this picture? Hi, friends. And as you well know, um, can you hear me? Yes, I got you. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, the problem is, is that the, it's a money thing. Mm-hmm. And... The Deshaun Watson contract really screwed everything up. Yes. Yeah. Preach that again, will you please? Preach Deshaun that again. Watson, Deshaun Watson's contract really messed everything up, and here's why. Deshaun Watson hasn't played ball, hasn't played football for over a year and a half, and he got mm-hmm. a guarantee, 250-plus million. From, when the the Ravens off- of all t- from the Cleveland Browns of all teams. What? I, 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 don't, I, I don't know, man. But what happened is that uh, – from what I've been reading is that um, they weren't going to give him a fully contract deal or wasn't give him the number that he wanted. Um, I think that he was, they're only going to give him 133, 134 million up front yep. on a, on a 200 and some, $240 million, three, something, something like that. And mm-hmm. he balked on it. He's like, no. So then the way I look at it is the way the team is constructed around him. Now, if you want to use a, a, an example, look at the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, yes. the Cincinnati Bengals, what they did was, it's an old saying, you always draft from within. Mm-hmm. You always try to build a team from inside, not from the outside. Right. And so what the Bengals have done, they invested over $130, $140 million on their offensive line. Mm-hmm. They have three rece- They have three amazing receivers and a tight end and a running back. That All of can them top tier. Post- All of them are top tier. And look at the result. Super Bowl appearance for the Bengals. AFC Championship this year, and I think the year before they lost to the Chiefs in the AFC Championship too. Yes. So Lamar is looking at that. Lamar is looking at that. Is that what? What are you, what are you building around me? Mm-hmm. Ever since Ozzie Newsom no longer 
so doing the draft and left as a GM, our yep. picks have been have our picks. I've been scratching my head. It's like, why are we picking these players? The only player I can honestly, legitimately say that it was a solid pick was J.K. Dobbins in the second round. Yep. And the thing is, is that now Lamar is Lamar wants the guaranteed money, which I think they should pay him. Yes. But here's the thing, though. I wouldn't be mad if they traded him. Mm-hmm. It would hurt. But the thing is, though, Lamar needs to be in a better situation. And I've been looking around and trying to see where's the best place he can go. And the only right. team I can think of right now is the Atlanta Falcons. And here's mm-hmm. why. The Falcons, one, have draft capital. Two, yeah, they're almost – Yes, they have eight, about. I think the last time I saw, they have over eighty million dollars of money to spend. Mm-hmm. And well, I would honestly, what what I think, what I can see happening is the Falcons would trade Ritter, the rookie quarterback, with a with the with picks from this year, next year, and the following year. Trade it for Lamar, and the Ravens can give him a couple, um, a couple fifth, sixth round picks or whatever. And that's how that's how you would settle it. And then Lamar would get his money in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. But that's what I see. But it was very disappointing for me to see him go down. I think in week twelve, and when he went down, I said to all you know, I said to all my to my friends, like it's over. The season's over. He's not coming back. It's a business right. decision. It is. I mean, he it is. He could have came. He could have came back and played, but he didn't. And I wasn't mad at him because I knew it was a business decision. Mm-hmm. And I'm praying that the Ravens can figure something out and keep him and somehow try to put some pieces around him because the pieces on offense is just not there. Now, the defensive side of the ball is great, but we can't have the defense playing the majority of the snaps between 45 to 50 snaps a game. And the offense doesn't produce. Mm-hmm. So if you can't give Lamar Jackson the weapons that he needs, then I don't see I don't see my team. We'll probably be the third best team in our division. Sad, but it hurts me to see that every day Lamar Jackson this, Lamar Jackson that is like, oh, either sign him or trade him. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And it's become nauseating. And I hate to Very. say that. I, I hate to say that about a young talent who's been run into the ground who hasn't been given a chance to really improve as a quarterback. And that's nothing against Lamar. It's against the organization. I've said that for you. I've said that since he's come into the league. And he won the MVP. He won the MVP on a rookie deal. Yes. And you should. And and, and that MVP. And the most important thing about that MVP, it was unanimous. It was a unanimous unanimous. MVP. And what they should have, what the Ravens should have done, they should have jumped on it, on it then. They mm-hmm. could have signed. They could have got a big deal on a sh- on a short on a shorter, you know, four year, five year deal. Right. Got him his money, mm-hmm. and by the time that deal ended, he would still be 27, 28 years old at the prime of his career, and he could have got a second contract, and we would have had, and the Ravens would have had him for the next ten to twelve years. But it's just not happening, and 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 the draft is going to be the draft's going to be fun this year. There's going to be a lot of wheeling, a lot of dealing. Oh There's yeah, be a lot. Of, Ooh, them phones are going to be – all 32 teams' phones all are going to be blowing up. Gonna, their, their phones mm-hmm. are going to be blowing up, like, blowing up like crazy. You know how the Ravens should have handled the Lamar Jackson deal that should have been done? I will give you a name. Patrick Mahomes. Mm. Patrick – they yes. should have handled it the same way the Chiefs handled Patrick Mahomes. Why do okay. I say – why do I say it that way? Because – Patrick Mahomes proved what he was worth after he got the job from Alex from Alex Smith from yeah from Alex Smith and Kansas City even though he he took him to the AFC Championship even though they lost to Tampa Bay even though they lost to even though they lost to Tampa Bay he proved himself then. He proved himself. He, he proved himself. So what do the Kansas City Chiefs do? The next year, he took them all the way. Speaking of Patrick Mahomes, he took them all the way. And what did the Chiefs do smartly? They jumped all over it. Because he brought them their first title in 50 years. The Chiefs said, what do you want? Because we gave- expect you to be healthy. 
We expect you to be around. What do you need? And sure, Kansas City stumbled in the Super Bowl against Tampa Bay, but this past year, he took him to the finish. He, he sure did. The, he took him to the but finish. You have, but you have to but you have to look at the scope of the team, though. Yeah. All the players that they have gotten, they've drafted or they've traded. Yep. And that goes all to the front office. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, though, I'm not very confident with the front office in Baltimore because yeah. now they're having – now I'm seeing these projections that they want to draft a running back. Why? We need some offensive – we need an offensive line. Mm -hmm. We need – we excuse me. You know, we we just need O-line help, and we need another receiver. But I honestly think that the these young receivers that are coming in now, right? there's not a receiver that – you can say like, okay, Justin Jefferson, that kid can play on Sunday. There, there hasn't uh, been a receiver like that, not only since Justin Jefferson, but since the 49ers drafted Debo Samuel. Right. That you can say this kid can play on Sundays and can contribute right away. There's no room for development in Baltimore because now Pittsburgh is reloading. Cincinnati is right now top two team in the AFC. Okay. I don't yep. know what's going on in Cleveland. Don't now, ask. If Deshaun <laughs> listen, well, listen it's Cle it's Cleveland. Does that tell you anything? It's Cleveland. Yeah, but the thing is, though, I hate playing the Browns, and and as a Raven fan, I hate playing the Browns in Cleveland in December. Right. It doesn't matter what the record is. I it just hate it. watching those division games because it just it, it uh, you know heart medicine needs to be me needs to be prescribed to me <laughs> because those games are treacherous. You get the idea with me when the 49ers face the Los Angeles Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. More importantly, the Seahawks. On the road. Now, now this year, the 49ers killed the Seahawks on the road. And, and I get mess all the time. Oh, they only beat them by eight points. We dominated that game. Shut up. Mm -hmm. Just shut up. Yeah, you did. We, well, do we dominated that game with no problem. With no problem. Well, yeah, you did. Now you guys are in the pickle too because you have no quarterback now. One, so I say, I say, I don't. The one quarterback I will not trust in that room is Trey Lance. I will not trust. Yeah. Him. I just don't see why the 49ers traded all the Pressure. mortgage their future. Pressure. And on they, a kid. they're trying to get they're trying to get their mortgage back, and the only way you can get that back is to send Trey Lance packing. You just have you have to send you have to send that you have to send him packing because well well and that and that presents a quandary. Who would pick him up? Who would be a, a who would be a trade partner? And then also, you guys also invested the remainder of your future for the next couple of years on McCaffrey, mm -hmm. which I which which McCaffrey paid dividends. McCaffrey played to that to investment Super made that investment made sense. Yes. That investment flourished. made total sense. Yes. To pick and up flourishing. Christian, and he's going to flourish. They're going to pay him. All right. Let's just, for people that don't think it, they're going to pay him, they're going to pay all of their free agents that they have coming up. The next mega deal they're going to work on is Nick Bosa. They're working on that now. They have to. They're, they're, they're going to work on a mega deal for Nick Bosa. What the 49ers do, these other teams don't do is tell what's going on. Yes. Honesty, hey, honesty goes a long way. Yep. And the they, front they, office, 49ers front office is one of the probably top front offices in the league. Mm -hmm. And you can see that. And I'm I'm not a 49er fan. I'm a football fan. It was good to see San Francisco in the playoffs. Yep. Beating, you know, playing Dallas and beating Dallas and bringing beating back the old rivalries. And beating Dallas again. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. adore that. Yeah, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a question mark what the 49ers are gonna do at the quarterback position because Garoppolo ain't going back. We you know that he ain't going yeah. back. Yeah, he's not and he's not and, and and Purdy's gonna be out and you're gonna have no choice, Brian, to see you're gonna see Lance behind center the majority of the preseason which and they're gonna which frightens me. Which absolutely mm -hmm. frightens the daylights out of me because he's not ready. He hasn't been ready since he came out of North Dakota State. Let's just say it the way it needs to be said. 
he has, and I've either. said this. I am not sold, nor will I be sold, on Trey Lance. And and I've had people telling me, oh, it's just going to take time. It's just going to take snaps under center. Snaps he should have taken at North Dakota State. And the other part is he can't stay on the field. Big problem. Big problem. It is. You guys are going to – it's going to be very interesting to see what the 49ers are going to do. I wouldn't be surprised if they pick up – if they could pick up a quarterback off a of free agency, not, not like a top-tier quarterback, but maybe right. like a second-tier quarterback, try to keep him afloat until, until Purdy, Purdy gets healthy. Back. Because Purdy yeah. is the starter. Purdy is the man. Yeah. Going forward, yeah. the man has to be Brock Purdy because – yeah and. There's no other way. There's no there's no other way you can put this. Brock Purdy is the franchise quarterback. All we have to do is get him healthy. And if the 49ers are smart, it may cost us a playoff appearance uh, next year. If the 49ers are smart, get a veteran quarterback in to keep us afloat. And I mean that. Keep us afloat. And well, then. A, yeah. And, and then you get Purdy back. You reset the following. You reset the following season, and then go. Yeah, because Purdy right. can get you thirty points a game with no problem. Well, the reason why is because that defense gives him a short field. Yes, and if the defense, and that's a, the number one rated defense, and I've said this all season long. Yep, that the 49ers have the best four down linemen in football. Right there, I think. Best, best the games that I've seen them play. Well, the thing is, though, that pocket collapses with four guys rushing the quarterback with no blitz. Right, right. Which, which means what? Your linebackers are running free, mm -hmm. and your and your and your defensive backs can get physical with the with the receivers. Speaking of so linebackers, speaking of linebackers, two of the best in the business, Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw. And Greenlaw yes. came about by and Greenlaw came about by accident. Okay, because Greenlaw came about due to an injury. Yes, and they wanted yeah, to see, you know, right. what can Drake, what can Drake Greenlaw do? And then you have those safeties out there that just be laying wood on everybody Ooh, too. Oh man! Oh, that cow! That even in the Philadelphia game, man, I I can't pronounce his name. He's a, he's a Polynesian kid. Looks like Troy uh, Polamalu's uh, lost. Talanoa uh, Hufanga. Talanoa Hufanga. <sighs> That boy can lay some wood, and, and, and that's he another thing was, too. And he correctly was a Pro Bowler this year. Oh yeah, yeah. That kid can cover. The kid can cover the slot. The kid can cover the deep ball. The kid can uh, help out with a run. And on the very few times on occasion, the, that kid can come and shoot the gap on a blitz. It's just yep. That's that. That's the winning formula. That's how my Ravens won in two thousand. Get get. Yep. You just give them. Give the quarterback a short field, and all you need to do is put up points, three or six. It doesn't matter as long as points go up on that board. It's going to help the defense. Then play even much more harder. Then the defense then could be much more take much more risks, and those risks will then pay off. And then that's how that team's unstoppable. And it was and it was proof in the pudding was in the season this year until until yes. Purdy went down in the championship game. Absolutely. Because that game was back and forth, and of course, turnovers wins football games, especially in the in the, yep. in the playoffs. And, and it's going to be Eagles very played, And the Eagles played a fabulous game. All right, let's take. I'm taking nothing away, nor will I ever take anything away from the Philadelphia Eagles. They played a fabulous game. They sure did. They played a and fabulous Super Bowl. That Super Bowl was a, that was Jalen Hurts' MVP. If they would have given him the MVP, even though they lost, I think. 100% out of 100%, everybody would have agreed with it. Everybody, every, absolutely everybody would agree, would have agreed with that. Absolutely yeah. everybody would have agreed, would have agreed with that. I, I mean, can't you can't, the draft. yeah, can't, can't wait either. Let's take a pause. When we come back, more sports with Sharif Ahmed Sports Talk joining me here on the program. And I think this is going to be a Monday thing back after this on the Brian Snow Show. WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key. Home of Southern Sports and Talk. Noonan, Sharpsburg, Franklin. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, you may qualify for a free continuous glucose monitor system. Managing your diabetes is crucial to your health. 
The new CGM systems can automatically manage your diabetes better for you. And by using a CGM system, you can eliminate forever one thing most people with diabetes hate the most, finger sticks. Now it's possible to manage your diabetes better, end the painful finger sticks, and get a new CGM monitoring system at little or no cost to you. We even provide in-home delivery and do all the insurance paperwork for you. Now is the best time to manage your diabetes better and get your continuous glucose monitor. Call now for details. 800-897-0014. 800-897-0014. 800-897-0014. That's 800-897-0014. Paid for by U.S. Med. Paid non-attorney spokesperson paid for by the Sentinel Group. This is an important message for anyone diagnosed with cancer after being exposed to Roundup or other weed killers. A California jury recently found Monsanto's weed killer caused a groundkeeper's cancer and issued a verdict for $78 million. More evidence found that Monsanto, the manufacturer of Roundup, may have known that Roundup and other weed killers were likely linked to organ damage and cancer. This information was hidden from the public as proprietary trade secrets since 1981, and Monsanto may have failed to adequately warn about the potential risk of cancer. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with cancer after being exposed to Roundup or other weed killers, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Sentinel Group now. You'll pay nothing unless there's a recovery in your favor. Don't fight it alone. 1-800-619-8064. 1-800-619-8064. That's 1-800-619-8064. 1-800-619-8064. Are you looking for a reliable dental practice that not only cares about your teeth, but is friendly to work with? How about one that offers great deals and new patient promotions? Well, your search is over. Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton, Georgia is committed to giving you the biggest and brightest smile. Right now, get a $99 new patient special, including x-rays and exam. Maybe you're looking for veneers. Most Valuable Smiles veneer special includes one free veneer with every five purchased. Or get that bright white smile you've always wanted by taking advantage of an exclusive $100 off Zoom whitening treatment when you book today. And don't forget that 2022 is almost over. That means most insurance policies will reset by the new year, and to avoid losing that extra money, you need to use it or lose it. Book an appointment today with Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton to lock in these exclusive deals. Call 706-623-0318 or visit mostvaluablesmiles.com. This is the Brian Snow Show, live on WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key, home of Southern Sports and Talk, Noonan, Sharpsburg, Franklin. thing is until you can erase three february's shut up where sports is the base life and fun are the results this is the brian snow show all right i i i I read, welcome back to the Brian Snow Show, uh, first of all, and thank you to the folks at WQEE 99.1 noon in Georgia for picking us up, and a syndication is about to happen. I'm just going to put that out there. Uh, thank you to the folks at WLEO 26.7 Baltimore for picking us up as well. I'm going to read a comment, and this is how we'll close up shop here. I'm going to read a comment that should make me angry, but doesn't considering the source. Rod West said, quote, all those teams Jordan went against lack in front office. Jerry Krause plus Phil Jackson plus Scottie Pippen equals six rings. Really? Hmm. Really? I, 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 uh, just like you, I'm just like you, my friend, I'm uh, shaking my head. I'm shaking my head at this. Uh, really? You... I, I'm not going to really quote, really say anything about that. Once again, they're trying to tarnish those six NBA finals that he. Yeah, has they won. are. They're trying to tarnish uh, MJ. They're, 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 they're uh, trying to. They're trying to yeah, tarnish MJ. Six and zero in the NBA finals. 
uh, if memory serves me correct, he won finals MVP in all those finals. He sure did. Uh, never saw a game seven in the NBA nope. finals. Nope. Uh, I, I, I don't understand. Um, and if he did not retire in 93, you know, there's they another don't. argument here. There was a big argument down here in Houston. If, 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 the, if Jordan did not retire, would they have gone on a stretch where they would have won in the entire decade of the nineties period, you know, period that could be that, 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 that could be, you know, for, I agree with you 90, about 90% of, uh, I agree with you, uh, snowman, but that will be for another time. We can talk about it. Yeah. But that'll, it be be, another it, time. that'll be another yeah, time. Let's keep, let's if we start now, if that, we start now, if we start we'll, this yeah, argument we'll, now, we'll be on for another hour. And, uh, you know, the folks at Q, we only got an hour to, to do this. But I, I want to thank you for coming on to the show today. And oh, thank you for having me. Man, I love you very, very much. I'm going to say I thank have you, a request bro. of you that I will make off the air. But I hope that you continue to ref more games. I hope you Which continue, my friend to do what you love to do and uh just just continue to kick ass man i mean i love you i love you very love much you too, man we you and i about, have been, you and i have been friends a few years now and i want to make this a permanent spot for you that we can do yeah. this and the folks, and we'll, we'll get into a lot more going forward. We'll get into a lot of Southern sports. You know, we're on a lot of Southern networks. We'll cover any and everything with the Brian Snow Show. So to the folks at WQEE 99.1 Atlanta, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to Sharif Ahmed for joining me today. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you, my friend. I really, yeah, you as well. really can't. Um, like I said, sent your request off offline, hoping you can assist with that. But folks, thank you so much. And Sharif, thank you for coming on today. I appreciate you and I love you, brother. Thank you for having me, man. And we'll definitely talk more and debate a little bit more. It's going to yes. be a good time, brother. And uh, again, before I before we hang up, man, uh, keep your fight. Uh, keep that fight going, man. It's a really it's a blessing that uh, that you that you beat it. But the fight ain't over, as you well no, know. The fight ain't it's over. Not. Fight ain't over. All right, brother. Fight is All right, not brother. Over. God bless. God bless God you, bless. man. And uh, we'll talk again. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Thank you, Sharif Ahmed, joining us here this afternoon on uh, this premiere edition of the Brian Snow Show on WQEE ninety nine point one FM. I'll take us the rest of the way. Uh, we got a few minutes left, and I want to say something. I want to say, first of all, I want to say thank you to Ryan O'Neill and the folks at WQEE for picking us up, for picking up this program. I cannot say thank you enough for all of the hard work that you put in, the hard work that the station puts in, and the hard work that the people here at Snowman Multimedia uh, put in. And they were gracious enough. Ryan was gracious enough to not only pick up this show, but what you will hear following it, which, of course, is Snowman in the Morning, that uh, we're on at 8 a.m. Eastern, but the replay will come right after this. And to the folks in Atlanta, we're going to have a lot of we're to the folks in the South. We're going to cover a lot of Southern sports, you know, with the with the national show. And I want to say hello to my buddy Rod Peterson, who is also a part of the WQEE family. But let me say thank you to everyone for your prayers, for your good wishes, and for everything. All the good vibes that you sent. All the good vibes that you sent to uh, help me and my family get through this cancer fight. Boy, it was not easy. Let me just be real. It was not easy. It's not an easy thing to do. When you're told so many times over that the cancer that you have is a fatal one, when you're told that you can't beat this, 
You want to prove them wrong. And I'll tell you, while I was going through chemotherapy, I didn't know what to think or what to do. I really didn't. But my wife, Jody, bless her heart. And, oh, she's such a strong woman, and I'm so glad I married her. We were living in North Carolina when we got the diagnosis. And Jody said, I know you love living in Carolina, but I want to get you healthy. I need my king. Those were her exact words to me. I need my king. Well, we moved. Uh, we moved. And I want to thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Harash Raghunath and Dr. Attila Nakib for all of your work and all of you and all of your prayers and all of your actions saying, we'll get this. Dr. N Dr. Nakib looked me in the eye and said, we will get this monster. And they did. I had surgery April 4th. We're coming up with a one year anniversary, but got the diagnosis that I'm in remission six weeks early. So we're going to celebrate Jody and I that one year anniversary. And we're going to celebrate it in style. Let me get on out of here. Thank you, Sharif Ahmed, for joining me this afternoon. I appreciate you. I love you. I love everybody for uh, taking uh, taking this show and running with it and just having a whole lot of fun. We'll see you tomorrow on the next edition of the Brian Snow Show. God bless you. We're out of here. So long, everybody. <laughs>